Hello, my name is Kai, and today I'm going to show you a little repair I did on my Dyna Mini. The problem I had was that the little silver knob on the shutter release lever had snapped off. I think probably uh, it got caught on something in my camera bag. I'm not sure what happened. But at any rate, what I was left with was a little nub of a shutter release that was kind of sharp and uncomfortable to trip. My solution was to take a little bit of epoxy putty and bond it to the end of the nub so that I had a full working shutter lever now. I'm not going to re-repair my camera, but I will show you the steps I took to uh, repair this. So the first thing I need was epoxy putty. Now you don't have to get this brand. There are many type, different types out there. Uh, plumber's putty for repairing plumbing, uh, steel putty, and so on. Uh, since we're not really doing anything structural here, we just need a little bit of epoxy to bond to the end of the uh, shutter lever. Uh, just about anything will do, as long as it is putty. I have a pair of gloves to work with the putty. A single edge razor to cut the putty, and also I'm using it as a uh, shield for the camera, and then a utility knife. Now I mentioned that I use this razor blade as a shield. And what I mean by that is when I was forming the putty around the lever, I used the razor blade up against the body of the camera because we are, after all, working with an adhesive, and the last thing we want to do is bond or glue the shutter lever into one place. So it's, it's very important while you're doing this to make sure that the le lever stays loose and is able to move freely. Now I'm going to put on my gloves here. I don't know if you ever worked with epoxy putty before, but essentially it's just a two-part epoxy in putty form. And what you do is you take the, let's see, the epoxy putty here, and then the knife. Now this epoxy putty is sealed in uh, plastic. Um, some putties I've worked with before have um, just, are, are just in plastic tubes, and the ends tend to dry out a little bit. Um, if you find that's the case, I would cut away the part that's dried out on the end. And I'm here I'm just going to cut off an eighth of an inch and discard that. I don't know if you can see this putty, but there's a core, and then on the outer part is the second part of the epoxy. So now we're going to cut the part we're going to use here. I'm going to cut about a half inch off. This is way more than we need, but I find that the more you have to mold, it's just it makes it a little easier to mix and um, get a nice even texture here. So you need to mix the two parts of the epoxy well. So here I'm just kind of squishing it together. And as you do this, as the chemicals react together, it'll get just a little warm. And you want to get it into, you want to just keep kneading it. And it'll start to uh, look a little more like Play-Doh. You can see why I'm using the gloves. All right, I can feel it's getting a little warm. I'm getting a pretty good texture here. All right, so now all I need is a little fraction of what I got here. So I'm going to tear it in half, so that aside. And then I even need less than that, so I'm going to take another half off of that. I'm going to roll this into a little ball. That's still that's about, I guess that's about right. So I'm going to take a little bit of a clothespin here. Let's 
I can already tell that this is a little too much, so I'm going to pinch off say, a third of that. As you can see, I don't really need that very much. Well, the other thing you can do to prep the end of the broken off nub is to roughen it up a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper or use the edge of the razor blade to scrape it up a little bit. Okay, you can see I'm able to form this a little bit as it starts to set up a little bit. Now, when you're working with the camera, as I mentioned before, the important thing is to keep the epoxy from bonding to the camera. And the way I did this was to take the razor blade and put it against the camera like this. And as the, I was forming the epoxy, I kept moving the razor blade to make sure that the lever wasn't bonding to the body of the camera. And I was actually moving the lever up and down a little bit to make sure I wasn't bonding the barrel of the camera here. And when the epoxy is first setting up, you can't really push on it without pushing it off. So I was just using the utility knife here to kind of keep it away from the openings of the, of the um, shutter channel here. Let's see how we're doing here. Yes, yeah, that's starting to set up pretty well. So you kind of just take your fingers and kind of bend it into a little rectangular shape. So as the epoxy gets a little harder and harder, you're able to grab it a little more. Um, occasionally what I would do once it was starting to set up, I would take the razor blade and I would pull away from the body of the camera a little bit, just to make sure I was get, getting a little bit of clearance behind the lever. And then I was tripping the shutter and making sure that the uh, channel against the camera and the, on the barrel, I wasn't getting any binding with the, with the epoxy putty. And then in about an hour, the whole thing kind of cured. And that was how I repaired the shutter lever on my Diana Mini.